Hello everyone! In this talk, I will introduce our paper Staloris and RPKI downgrade attack. I am Donika Mirdita, and my co authors are Thomas Hlavacek, Filip Jaitna, Haya Schulman, and Michael Weidner. RPKI is an infrastructure created to protect BGP routing from problems ranging from benign misconfigurations to prefix hijacking. RPKI is essentially a collection of distributed databases containing route origin authentication or ROA files. A ROA contains a network prefix and an autonomous system number that is allowed to originate that prefix. The repositories containing ROAs are called publication points and are usually hosted by entities registered under one of the five regional internet registries. This ensures that the publication point is reachable by anyone on the internet using RPKI. This repository contains a variety of files, but the most important ones for the scope of this presentation and research is the manifest file and the ROA. The manifest is the entry point of the publication point. It is a list of all signed objects contained in the repository. When a client wants to protect its routing table using RPKI, it will install a relaying party, which is a piece of software that queries all known repositories periodically and then validate the downloaded ROAs. After validation, the payload is then sent to BGP routers who update the routing tables and with the RPKI status. If there is a valid ROA for a route, the status becomes valid. If there is a bad ROA, the status becomes invalid, which means that the route should be dropped. Um, and then there is also not found or unknown. This status means that there is no ROA or information for that particular route. Unfortunately, RPKI still has some ways to go until global acceptance, so not found routes are also allowed through, otherwise we would be cutting out most of the internet. As a result, now, if BGP routers of an RPKI-protected autonomous system receive false advertisements that conflict with existing ROAs, they will be able to um, avoid getting those prefixes hijacked. Downgrading RPKI means that existing route origin protection by ROAs is downgraded or invalidated, and therefore prefix hijacks become uh, possible again. The picture on the right represents one way to downgrade RPKI via a low-rate attack. So think of our attacker as an entity that has registered a valid publication point and is therefore queried by all early link parties on the internet periodically. This positioning allows the attacker to predict uh, when queries from specific relaying parties are sent and at what intervals. Having this information, the attacker can then trigger rate limiting on different servers offering their services to the relaying party. It can rate limit DNS name servers, uh, and it can also overload the publication points themselves. This uh, rate limiting can prohibit the relaying party from connecting uh, during the refresh intervals with a publication point. And therefore, uh, in this way, uh, we prohibit the relaying party from downloading updated files from this publication point. All objects in the publication point have a validity time frame, so they will eventually expire if the relaying party cache is not regularly updated with the latest objects. Manifests are often valid for a few hours or just a handful of days at most, and uh, they are the easiest file to um, invalidate or to wait out until they expire. And when a manifest has expired, the entire repository does not get processed anymore. Once objects expire, uh, the ROAs that these publication points uh, have are no longer available, and therefore the RPKI parameter in the BGP routing table changes from valid to not found. Now we have RPKI downgrade, and a prefix that should have ROA protection is, again, um, vulnerable to hijacking. Here we have an optimized version of our low-rate downgrade attack. If in the original iteration we needed to cause packet loss for every refresh interval in a precise manner, with this upgrade we need only to cause packet loss at best one time, at worst a couple of times. So the best scenario, so th this would be the, the best scenario for the attacker. And it works like this. The victim relaying party connects with an attacker who owns a valid delegation for a publication point. The attacker slows down the connection uh, with the relaying party until some built-in timeout is hit. All relaying parties have timeouts, but these timeouts range from 
five minutes to 2.9 hours for one single connection. This means that the attacker can extend the stalling of this one refresh interval by creating more child publication points. The relaying party is going to traverse down the attacker's tree, and every one of these publication points is going to stall the relaying party for the maximum amount of time possible, so for the timeout, uh, until the timeout hits. In total, the stalling time for the attack would be the size of the tree multiplied with the uh, timeout per publication point. Given available resources, an attacker can create such trees with as many nodes as it needs, even in the hundreds or thousands of nodes. The point of compounding the, st compounding the stalling time is to make existing objects in the relaying party cache expire, namely the manifest, uh, and uh, therefore uh, make sure that the ROAS are no longer valid and no longer uh, sent over to the BGP routing table. When the manifest has expired, this is what happens. Essentially, the RPKI protection was uh, neutralized again. There is a range of reasons why RPKI is vulnerable right now. Rate limiting in DNS, while important to protect from denial of service attacks, can also be exploited as a tool to attack a service. According to our measurements, you can see a list uh, of the maximum uh, number of packets necessary to trigger rate limiting across all the named servers for a total of 25 publication points. Out of this, uh, we consider 21 to be vulnerable since they will stop sending responses at some point. The other four only slip the responses, meaning that an attack is not practical, assuming the resolver is able to connect via TCP. Furthermore, two out of the 21 are particularly vulnerable because of a very low rate limit of only three to four responses per second, which is very easy for an adversary to trigger. Relaying party predictability is also a factor that enables our attack. Relaying party caches are refreshed in stable intervals, which can be observed and measured by any interested party. In addition to that, manifests are also easy to attack due to a validity time frame of less than 48 hours for over 70% of all manifests on the internet. And last but not least, anyone can instantiate the Stellaris optimized version of the attack. As far as we can tell, there is no limitation on how many um, times a publication point can redelegate the same resources to child publication points. So far, we saw how, downgrade RPKI, how to downgrade RPK protection, and the question is how feasible is this attack in the wild? Here I want to add that our experiments were done in a lab. The stalled repositories that we created were never accessible from the outside, and the probing for rate limit thresholds was done in accordance to best practices. We communicated with DNS operators to find suitable probing rates, and our tests lasted for at most six seconds. So the first thing that enables our attack is the predictability of virtually all RPs. And we found that by and large, all relaying parties follow the default refresh intervals in the source code. And even if there are deviations, they can be uh, easily uh, measured once an attacker sets its own publication point and con collects uh, logs from uh, relaying party that are querying um, the RPK infrastructure. The infinite delegation and therefore massive tree of stalling publication points can be instantiated using available open source software and implementations. There are no limits, uh, as far as we can tell, uh, that can uh, avoid this kind of exploitation. The amount of packets needed to trigger rate limiting and ensure the attack is successful varies for different scenarios. Scenario 1 to 3 are pure low rate based attacks for different attack parameters, and the last one is the optimized Stellaris attack. To calculate the rate limiting effort, we took into account the number of attempts uh, to contact the name server during the refresh interval, the time until the manifest expires, meaning the attack window, the refresh interval of the relaying party for the next retry, and finally, how two of the most uh, widely used uh, recursive uh, DNS resolver software uh, handle uh, retries. 
The last column is what we call the overwhelming factor O, which is the rate of spoofed requests the attacker needs to send to stop the connection from taking place for that specific scenario. In the following table, we calculate the attacker's uh, rate limiting effort for each scenario. And we see that for the Stellaris optimization, the attacker needs an average of 4,800 packets per second, and even in the worst case scenario, about 100,000 packets per second, which is still a very feasible uh, and realistic um, uh, attack capability. So as a summary, RPKI, despite being correctly implemented by client and users alike, is still vulnerable to downgrade attacks. And we have demonstrated how such an attack would look like and how feasible it is to do. Rate limiting and stalling of relaying parties has a very low entry bar. It is neither prohibitively expensive nor difficult to set up. Existing software can enable this exploitation, and it helps the attacker that their effort can only be detected by a manual log checking by the relaying party administrators. The devastating impact that the attack has is disproportional to its costs and its efficiency. The adversary can downgrade RPK protection for a considerable chunk of the internet if they were to attack a uh, large provider. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to send an email to me or any one of my co-authors. Thank you.